And welcome to tonight's Tuesday night podcast here at Bogies. And I'm John Masoni here with head football coach for Venice Indians, John Peacock. And coach, uh, Thursday night, ESPN came into town. Um, a lot of buzz in the community regarding that situation. And uh, I think a lot of buzz just, I mean, kids, families. It's a, kind of a neat thing when you can uh, call your buddy out in California or call your buddy out in Arizona or family in Ohio and say, hey, turn on ESPN2. Like, oh, two? Yes, you know, you're, the, yes. It's not, it's not somewhere you got to go obscure to find it. It's there, and then you see it, and um, the field looks great. Everything looks good. It's a it's a chamber of commerce, commercial free, commercial free it for Venice uh, as I don't a whole. Know if we need to do any more, um, have any more people come down and visit. And we don't well, know if we can. <laughs> it, at some point in time, you look at it and you say, like, man, that's a pretty nice place. But it it did look good, and uh, obviously the outcome of the game wasn't what we wanted—a 31-17 yeah. loss to St. Francis. But you know, we're not we're not silver lining this thing yeah, but we, all the way. But we we you and I talked in the coaches show a little earlier about how the growth of the team you know, in this, in this first stretch of games has really been expedited or, or, or moved f- quicker because of the talent uh, put we've played against in the first couple games. Yeah, you know, I think when you, you start the season and you kind of look at, you know, what you're trying to build and um, the goals that you're trying to set, and I think, you know, looking at, looking at our schedule, um, you know, we've, I've never you've, – you've been, we've been doing this for a long time, yeah. and I've never once – ever spoke about a outcome or a score or a record or you know what what our record should be or what I hope our record should be but I think when when you know I know looking at this as a coach um, before the season you know these first games they're they're meant to get us better you know that's the bottom line is right they, they are meant to get us better they are meant to teach us how to compete and not just compete but to compete when the person on the other side of you is a better football player. It's, it, it's adversity. How do you yeah. deal with adversity? How do you deal with – how do you figure out bigger, how to win a football game? Bigger, faster, stronger. And I think um, – well, not I think. I know from week one until the end of last week, we made some big, big strides. We made some big strides in the offensive line. We made some big strides in discipline. Um, I felt like we were able to execute a game plan. Um, we talked about pre-snap penalties yeah. um, in our in our coaches show, and um, we only had uh, we had two. I mean, two, they were big ones. I mean, yeah, I mean, they were big on offense. We had one that um, if we I don't feel like we not only did we have a pre-snap penalty on the, the one offensive play, but we also I don't feel like we executed the play very well. And, but it, but it would have took away a 40-yard gain and right. put us in scoring position. Um, and then on defense, we had a, you know, um, too many men in the field for a punt, punt return mm-hmm. when we, you know, the stops were at a minimum um, for the night. And we had just we had just gone, you know, we had just gone down the field and dropped a touchdown pass. And so the momentum was clearly kind of building. And then at we that kind point. of felt like, all right, we we got the ball back, you know. And it was still, it was still, um, we were still in the third quarter. Right now, we weren't in the third quarter. We were. We, were in the, in we just the, started at the beginning of the fourth. Yeah. And um, our mid- midway through the fourth, but we had also just started our tempo, and um, we had started to, uh, we were able to kind of move the ball um, with our regular offense and using tempo, and because um, I felt I didn't feel like it was a, I didn't think we could go into the game last week. And just lay lay our defense out there to dry. I felt like we had to protect them a little bit and keep the ball a little bit. And uh, you know, I don't know if we've ever since you know 2015 have had a six-minute drive. Right, right. You know, there, that never, hasn't happened in a long time. Yeah. We, you know, it would be 2015 would be the last time we've held the ball in offense for five minutes. Because we've either scored or something bad's happened. Right. Um, but it, and it's usually, you know, on offense, where you're talking three minutes. And, and what you were doing it. You're limiting possessions, obviously, for them, because right. that's what you're trying to do. And I think a lot of times well, it was more, more, not more or less possessions. It was just to keep, to to not put our defense out there to where they had to, um, they had to kind of bail us out early. And then, because I, I just felt like later in the game, if if they were doing that early. That later in the game, that, that St. Francis may be able to run away with it. And I think that, I think probably what happens in a lot of their games, that's exactly what does happen. 
they get they get to the point and just it starts going downhill and by the middle of the third quarter they're you know here comes right. the backups and we're good to go and I think a lot of times in, in a game that you're you're obviously trying to win the game and you look at it and you say okay so they're you know they look around and like okay we, this is not as what it, this is not the normal script for us right now right. we're we're facing guys and these guys are getting stronger because that's the one thing overall no matter if you're running tempo or you're running slow down or whatever you're doing you're still the, be, the usually the best conditioned team on the field at least that's not my opinion and i think that you're also you know in, you're you're prepared for, you know impeccably and so as a, as the game moves on i think venice always gets stronger and that's not always the case with a lot of teams a lot of teams they they don't have that need to be that way and they don't have the, they don't maybe have, don't have the same uh, conditioning program we have and at the end of the, as it gets going we get better they get a little worse and those are games you can you, you can win when you when you when you're doing that right when you're doing those right. things the right way but anyway at the at, you know, I felt you know looking at our, our schedule I think that we accomplished what we were trying to accomplish we got we got better exponentially very fast in these last three games playing the competition that we played and now now we're in a situation where it doesn't really get any easier we're playing you know Sanford Seminole who's the number one ranked team and 4M and uh, they have a 26 game uh, road road, road mm -hmm. win streak you know so they're coming to us so um, I think that's another motivating factor I mean things anything you can get to motivate your kids um, and that type of thing I think is pretty neat and we usually respond pretty well to stuff like that so um, you know, that's one thing that our kids know and they mentioned to them and, um, and they're probably on the other side saying you know the Venice coach is talking about breaking our Road, road win streak, yeah. and you know sure. we, we got to make sure we don't you know, let them break our road win streak. But and and yeah, we talked about the two 8A state champions. That they were in 20, and we were in 21. Right. And uh, you know, there's there's a little bit of a grudge match there. And you also mentioned the fact that there's um, that 4M 4S breakup of the of the of everything. And heck, 4Ms they're supposed to be the the, the yeah, tougher you, guys, you know, you know and, and 4S is supposed to be the guys out in the in the seeds. And when, when you mentioned in the coaches show about the rankings i wasn't aware of that but um you know we're one and two and we're ranked 37th in the country uh, by high school football america and we're ranked uh number 50 or 49 or 50 by uh, max preps and we're yeah. the number one seed and four s right now and number nine overall in the state number yeah and that so i mean obviously it's not just me saying we have a tough schedule and i think the the experts or whatever the experts are the computers now we have a tough schedule, and I and I think more and more as time goes by, because of social media and seeing you see highlights more. I mean, you got this, you know, this network doing this and that. They they know what's going on. It's not just like, hey, right. who they play? Oh, they got a W, so that puts them. They keep moving up the the, the, the ranks because they they they're winning whatever schedule they're playing at. Now it's looked upon, and they say, oh, I see what they're doing. I got this now. This is where this is where you get better. And I think a lot of that is the, a mimic of what the NCAA does with college football as well. There, there are more and more you, these inter, intersectional games where Alabama plays Texas or there, somebody goes out and plays uh, Oregon out there right. or whatever. Now people are getting rewarded ranking-wise because they're not, they're not ducking people and playing a lot of directional schools or whatever you want to call it. And uh, that's what's happened in high school. Now it's like, hey, you know, we stepped up and played a, a, in your state, in your area, the best team. And and it, it matters to, to do that if to, in a lot of yeah, cases. Yeah, I mean, I, you, I'm, I'm never going to play a Pop Warner schedule. I mean, there's some coaches around here that um, they're just happy as a pig and slop to play. Just get it over. Worst, worst yeah. schedule they can possibly play. And Dial act, it up act and like go. They're, yeah. Act like they're actually doing something. I think, that, I think you know, and one thing I say is I, I'd much rather be the bottom of the top than the top of the bottom. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're top of the bottom, what, what does that say? That just means you're not – you're actually you don't we really don't want to compete you don't want to challenge your kids yeah. you don't want to challenge your program you just you're just trying to build a resume whose resume right you know? how, how, how far do you does, it, yeah. does that push it you ain't building your kids resume you're building your resume for what and another thing you know and, and, and look at the results not just on the not just on the wins and losses and championships look at the results of the kids that go and, and are right. successful beyond venice high school football right. it's 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 more than we can count right now because you look at it and say you know, they got guys that in the NFL. You got guys that are, you know, that are performing at a high level at the next in college. And not only that, there's guys going out and becoming businessmen, and they're coming back and they're helping the, the football team out. They're, they're presidents of the clubs of this place. Right. They're, they're all over the place. Speaking of that, that was awesome. Um, Trey Burton, yeah, inducted into the Florida, Florida Georgia. Georgia Hall of Fame. 
I, that was I, pretty cool. I he, did say he would him. also be d- inducted into the Florida versus Kentucky Hall of Fame. If they have one that, of that was the first thing. Yeah. What about that game? But yeah. I, I said, yeah, that that's a game that. Um, and we were, and somebody said, oh, I, I, I had they had kind of forgotten that he had done some pretty significant things in that Florida oh, Georgia game. I think his was his maybe his freshman, freshman year. Freshman year, he Long. pretty much. I mean, if you're running, you run, you score on an 80 yard fullback dive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's yeah, no you've doubt. Done something, and you're you're a quarterback and you score a fullback dive. I think it was his sophomore year. Yeah, and you know the, the funny, this kind of kind of get off track a little bit here, but beginning of the, the beginning of the year, Kirby Smart had said something along the lines that maybe the game shouldn't be in Jacksonville anymore, or Florida, Georgia, because recruits can't go to the game and blah 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 blah. Think about the fact that how important a game like that is to, to the dynamics of college football and in the South and even in the SEC in particular, yeah. when they have a Hall of Fame for the game. You know, you don't you, all the Auburn and, and Alabama and all these other places. You play that game neutral site. It means well, a big deal. A, if they had an Alabama Auburn Hall of Fame, Trey Smith would be in it. <laughs> That's right. You know, so he was the he was the Iron Bowl MVP as a freshman and became an Auburn legend yeah. from that point forward. And that's the thing. So that's it's it's cool. And, and I I think that uh, I think knowing you know I know Trey you, you know Trey, you know you know him really well. I think that's that meant something a little bit to get the, to get that oh, that's acknowledgement. Huge. I mean, it's I mean, a it's that's, a cool deal. Yeah, that's that is that is definitely huge. Um, you know, so you know, he, he actually has his number retired with us. Um, there's three guys, and it's 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 Trey and uh, Bryce and Javon. You know, so that's I mean that's never. I, I guess we didn't ever have never had a banquet for it, but we we burned all the numbers. <laughs> they're we not, burned twenty two, not available. <laughs> six and twelve. They've been burned. You know, so you can't get them at Venice and until, like I said, until. They kick me out of here. Then I guess the next next guy will have to do it. But I might sneak back in and burn him if he gets him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, um, but uh, get back to Seminole real quick. Um, we talked a little bit about the and again the coaches show. We'd mentioned that they are good on the defensive line. You mentioned that very good defensive and line. Some fast back seven guys as well. Linebacker safeties. That yeah. Kind of thing. They they have a like we talked about in the coach show. I don't get all, into all the whole lot of the recruiting stuff. Um, but I, I think their most touted guy is number three, their defensive end. Um, but watching film, their inside guys, their other three, they play extremely hard. And it's almost like, um, I don't know, I shouldn't say they're better than number three, but uh, they, they all look like they can play. Yeah. And play. They play really well. They play with great effort. Um, their, their linebackers are – they're probably um, – a little undersized of what we've been seeing, okay. but they probably run a little bit better. Mm-hmm. They're they're almost like like a strong safeties playing just, linebacker, but, but just flying to the ball, right? But but getting to the ball very 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 fast. And then their corners, um, they they have, uh, and you, we talked about the four by one team. They were yeah, they had one of the fastest times in their four by one. I was told team. Coach Potter he was yeah. helping out with the, with their sprinters, and we had a real we. I mean, Venice had a phenomenal sprinting. Uh, four by one hundred meter team. They were second in the state, I think, last year. What it was, but they were second to Sanford, to Seminole, and, and they, they were like, Sanford. it wasn't. I don't even. I don't know if we could compete with them, no matter what. They were. They were. He said they were they silly the, fast. They had one of the top times in NC. One of the you know, yeah in the country, as far as, you know, yeah. not even just high school but college. But yeah. you know, so that tells you a little bit about uh, their defensive backs, and then offensively, um, boy, they are they are really, really, really explosive. They have um, three. Dynamic uh, wide receivers. Um, their, their number one guy, and like I said, coach, I don't, I don't get into names a lot, but their number one guy has been out. That while he was out, the uh, the number two receiver, which is actually number four on his jersey, he, you know, playing Kasimi Osceola, which is another top team in the very, state. Very, yeah, perennial power. Eleven catches, two hundred seventy-five yards, and. I think four touchdowns against in the, against them, and then um, the the uh, number one guy's back now, and he's he's special and you know like like a, a freak athlete, like uh, you know I, I guess I, you could describe him like a Malachi like um, yeah Malachi Wyman and um, jump out of the building right the whole thing yeah their quarterback makes really good decisions and throws a good ball I, th- I want to say he's a U- UCF commit. Um, UCF, USF, one, one of the, I think I want to say UCF. Can okay, be, that would make uh, sense. UCF likes to keep it local when they can. Yeah. So, um, and they have a good office line. You know. So, uh, th- you know, I think their deal is more of uh, they're going to run it and run it to keep you honest. 
but they they throw the ball around the park I and mean, they get it to their receivers and they they uh, do a nice job they're well coached um, obviously you win a state championship in 2020 right yeah 20, 20 we were 21 20 and then last year um I can't I can't remember exactly what happened I, I thought it was an <laughs> overtime loss and they missed an extra point or something along those lines and I can't remember but I know a pop got, was a pop got beaten by one I think that was what happened or was it yeah, I think it was Apopka that beat them. Then they, Apopka had to play but it was late. Treasure Coast or something like that. Yeah, it, it was, was late it in was the game. Late. Yeah. yeah. So No, I'm saying late in the playoffs. Either, yeah, either. oh, yeah. Yeah. So um, I want to say that the regional championship game pro pro possibly, That's but what I'm it not was. 100% sure. I'm, I, I, I'm, I would be very – it was, it was a regional because the next game was Apopka, Apopka and Treasure Coast, and that was state right, semifinals, right, right, right. and then we played Apopka Because we were like, finals. we want to play anybody besides – a Popka or Treasure Coast because <laughs> the single wing, and then I was like, "All right, well, we're playing one of them." So yeah, that's what that we got. What yeah. we got. So that, but um, we we'll talk a little bit else uh, during the um, mentioning about all these players that that Seminole has, and it's all the players that uh, St. Francis has. Uh, and during the ESPN broadcast, I had the fortunate, I was fortunate to sit up, sit behind those guys, and one thing they kept on saying over and over again is that they talk about how St. Francis was, but Florida, no matter where you go, what you do. You're going to run into great players, you yeah. know. Like so, like so. When we talk about these great players, you might hear us week after week after week talking about the next set of great players we're going to play against. So I think you know, thinking about how we've scheduled or how you've scheduled early in the year, it's, you know, you say, okay, so this guy is going to be really good, and this guy, and it sounds, you know, sometimes it sounds like daunting or whatever, but it really is 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 the norm at this oh, yeah, level. Yeah. That the schedule no, we're playing, is. it's normal to see this now because. Back in the day, you you know, I, I maybe I don't I mean maybe I was naive or didn't pay attention or whatever it may be, but now you just see it and you're like, my goodness, everybody that's at a certain at that state championship level of performance yeah. is going to have those guys. Yeah, um, exactly. And they, when you start getting to the playoffs, I mean, even you see it last year, like West Orange <laughs> with their receivers and their, they had what they had what they had nine. On defense, that were Division One guys, and the one kid that but it played phases. No, he played DN. He was he must have been two ninety, and he's lining up at, at wide receiver. Yeah, and he's they're th trying to throw passes, and he's being covered by Miles Weston, who's what five ten, five nine at, at, at much, right. as much, and he's making plays, you know. And and that kid was getting frustrated. So you, this, it doesn't matter how big or tall, they're all going to be talented, and you've got to be you got to say, well, I've seen a guy like this, or I've played, I'm, I can do this. And that only comes from doing it. Right. You know. That's my point. So when you get in the playoffs, you're going to see those guys week in and week out. You might not see it. You might not see as many and might not see as highly rated of guys as we saw against IMG and yeah. we saw against St. Francis. But you're going to see those guys. You're going to have to line up against those guys. And you got to, I mean, and if you don't have anything that you can you can pull out of the bank and say, you know, I've already lined up against somebody better than this, and this mm -hmm. is how I did. This yeah. is what I got to improve. You know, this is this is how I competed, and you know, it's you're you're just gonna set yourself up for failure when it's time to when it's really time to pay the piper. Right, and even like how much better, you know, just something simple like tackling got better. Yep. Because all of a sudden, you know, like, hey, you know what? Maybe I don't. I, I got to get there a little quicker. My my pursuit angle has to be different. You know. We saw a touchdown early in the year against IMG, and, and I think it was Sage Utsi kind of took an angle, and he missed him by five yards. I don't think Sage missed an, a, a pursuit angle no. at all against St. Francis. And I think that came with like, oh, I can't do this, or I've got to do it a certain way. And that's, that's a, that's a game-changing play for right. him, that he can not let that kid go 40 yards. He's only going 10 right. or 15. And that comes from knowing. If you've never seen it, I'm telling you, it'll be exactly the same thing. A team that, that comes in and plays them and has never seen that before is going to have a hard time understanding that type of speed or that type of strength when they're, getting, when they're trying to make a tackle or right. whatever, whatever it requires. No, you're exactly right. And, uh, so looking at the schedule, I think, that, I think that we accomplished what we want to accomplish. Now we're, now we're into this, the deal where we're playing, um, I guess, regular high schools, except for we do have, we do have Chaminade coming up. Three um, A state right. champion so last year. I think yeah. I think this is a, I think a lot of people are going to be watching or are looking at this game to see what we are. Yeah, you know. No, what I mean? this this is going to be a, this is going to be a measuring stick. I was actually going to bring that up later on, but this is a measuring stick. They're going to say, okay, we'll give them whatever it was, and and even right. Northwestern, I would say, is a measuring stick as well. But this one is like this clearly is similar size schools, similar similar. 
um, success rate in the last couple of years, you want to say that. And this is going to be one of those I say, well, let's see where, we, where everybody stands at this point. Right. So I, I, and I think a lot of people are looking at, you know, you got, you got 4M, you got 4S. And, no, I don't care what you say now. And at, on December whatever, mm -hmm. when all these state championships are done, and you got 1M, 1S, 2M, 2S, 3M, 3S, 4M, 4S, people are going to say, well, if they would have played a regular and in our right. regular, right. they wouldn't have won. Right. And that was that was one of my. That was we think one of, you didn't like very much. One of the reasons <laughs> I did not like yeah. the split of 4M and 4S because well, there's a lot of different reasons, but that was one of them. You know, and another another reason is I, I just felt like we're punishing the pretty girl. Like why are you pun you can't punish the pretty girl. Right. You know, right. Right. Make the pretty girl your the beauty queen. Don't don't punish these schools in South Florida because they're successful. That's why that's what makes Florida special is that we have we do have these pockets of like ridiculous talent, ridiculous talent. That that, that and they're but going back to my point about ESPN. That's when you say yeah in that in that area Broward Miami Dade all that different it's area. It's ridiculous. It's nuts because because it's not just. The, these teams that we're talking about, you know, over the years that you're playing, that there's the, the, the 7A state championship, which is St. Thomas Aquinas, could easily. Why, 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 uh, no, okay, yeah. You know, so let's say. I gotta, remind me, I got to tell you a story because someone brought their name up to, today to, to me. Cardinal Gibbons. I'll, get, I'll use that. No, they're private. Can't bring it private. Okay, I'm saying, but I'm saying, but those, but they're all, they're getting their talent from the same pool. You know yeah. what I mean? So they're not. It's not like they're. It's, I'm just saying all that talent, and then you've got uh, a Miami uh, Central that goes out and beats IMG. You know, right. and you say, okay, well, how'd that happen? Because the talent that's that's a, that's a public school that's got as much talent. And I'm 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 promising you, there's probably five kids that probably could still be playing on Miami Central if they weren't playing at Chaminade or Cardinal Gibbons oh, yeah. or th wherever else they may be in or. Um, uh, what's what's the latest and greatest? The all the they, what's the schools that are the the private? There's actually like a like a five star kid that left Central. I, I want to say he went to Chaminade. Yeah, again, it's like yeah. in the, and and over the years, it's been you can have Carroll City, you could have Northwestern, which we saw, and they've got oh, their receivers a four star. This so it's just it's not it's it's when you when you really put it in the totality of it, it's amazing. The amount of talent right. that comes out of there, which but it actually goes to show you, University of Miami when they were when they were winning those five national championships and everything else, they just put a big old circle around Miami and yeah. said, "We'll get all players from here, and we'll, we'll we'll get a quarterback from Pennsylvania or a quarterback from wherever it may be, and wherever, right. and then we'll do what we need to do." And it's it is amazing, but you're right. I mean, I think that's what's going to happen. It's going to be like, well, if. But I will say this: one thing I did like about it is a lot of those schools avoid playing each other over the years. Those those. So now it's going to force some of those Miami Dade and those Broward schools, not just to play each other for fun, but to play each other for for when it yeah, matters. No, that'll be that will be neat. That, that will, will be, be a neat process. But yeah. at the same time, we're we, they're still. It's going to be like you know the the South Florida is going to win all the all of them. Yeah. Oh yeah. This, the, the the M's are going to be. It should yeah. be pretty dominant. And then everyone's going to you know. The, Tease the S's. Right. Well, what's going to be is that, that, that the other seven counties, or it's six counties, wherever they may be, are going to be like, we want to split off and go. <laughs> we want to be. An we want to be. We want to be yeah. O's or whatever it may right. be. We're something else. Yeah. So like, well, yeah. So what is this going to happen now? Oh, they're South Florida still winning. So right. Maybe they're, we'll break again. We'll you're have, just not going to have eight of them. They're going to have four. Yeah, we'll so. have twelve classes now. <laughs> Yeah. You know. So eventually, somebody. So I think it's it's not reached the point of everybody gets a participation trophy. Yeah. We're not to that point, but at least the, the, I think I I know what the conceptually they're trying to do. But like you said, in your from your position, I understand. Really, are we are we doing that? Does it have to be so, that but, way? But, then, but what I'm saying is, this game, um, you know, winner whoever wins this game. I mean, basically, is, is, yeah. is, is you know, I think all the four M's should be rooting for us. Or the, four, or the four S's should be rooting right. for us, and all the four Go M's get them. probably root. Right, because yeah. at the end of the day, if, it, if someone wins it, like, oh, well. well if, we be, if, if, we don't, if we win yeah. against them, and then we, even if we don't win the state championship, yeah. they'll still they'll be say, like, hey, we're better than them because we beat Venice. Right. And we're, they beat those guys. So, they, right. yeah, there's a lot to say about that. You're, I agree. So, my story today, I had, um, and then we'll get, we'll get into talking more football. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I had to call a uh, headset company. Okay. 
and you know, I was calling about our headsets because they're kind of falling apart. And we've only, and I just bought the headset part. I'm not talking about the, the mechanical part. So I was like, you know, we, we just bought them like a year ago. And they're like, they're like crumbling apart. You know, they're falling apart. And, and um, he said, well, you know, what, it's about time for you to get a new, new set. Well, I said, well, no, actually, well, it may be, but these work pretty well. Right. I said, but what do you got? He's like, well, I don't know what kind of school you are, but, you know, you're from Florida, you know, and, um, you know, if you're, if you're a school that's a big time school like uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, you know, they get the, the X series. And I said, well, <laughs> if, if, if you're ju judging this off headsets and if, if, if if you don't have an X2, then I'm, yeah, we might as well I, hang up. We need double X. I'm not getting what? I'm not getting anything that they got. And only if it's the next level up. <laughs> Super duper yeah. X. Yeah. So that, was hap that happened today for real. So, he, like, so, we, so we do have that we're getting the better X, or we don't know if there's anything Oh, I don't know. I don't know. He, did, he didn't know. He wasn't the salesman. But he, that's how he referred to it. I said, well, I can promise you I'm not getting those. <laughs> You, you just ruined it for yourself. You just yeah. the sounds like, hey, yeah. man, I'm sorry. That guy's a tech. I don't know yeah. what's going on. Yeah. So, all right, well, listen, it's probably a good time to take a break right here. We'll get back to some football conversation after we take our 90-second break to thank our sponsors for tonight's podcast. See you back here in 90 seconds. Football have in common the perfect team and the perfect lineup. Douglas Jeep Chrysler Dodge Ram will always go the extra yard so you can score big with the area's best selection and savings. So if you're looking for a championship vehicle lineup and a dealership that tackles the competition, visit Douglas Jeep Chrysler Dodge Ram in Venice. And if you're looking for a championship football lineup, check out the Venice High football team. Who supports Venice High football? Douglas does! And welcome back to Bogies for part two of our podcast for tonight. And, Coach, we've been doing the uh, sponsor spotlight, the yes. spotlight sponsor uh, for, uh, for each week. And this week it is SCF, State yes. College of Florida. Um, we were talking in our break there about who went to, to SCF. I Francis got Francis. his digital design there. And, he, and so and he's – You see the work that he's – he's been able to do and what he's been able to accomplish with that degree i went to manatee junior college and anybody from that's in venice knows the brickyard that's where my that's where i went to college for two years where the they brick there they had classes that they have that was classrooms and that, that's how small it was the it was the venice campus because they've obviously the, the main campus so the, did they have a they have a pizza place there pizza place there was a sub shop and, um, and Manatee Community College. Oh yeah, right, in, right. Wow. So right in the courtyard there. So that was my, that was school. Yeah, for my me. daughter um, or my stepdaughter Mariah. She she was able to take um, almost a full year mm -hmm. of get get a full year of classes, college classes done while she was at Venice. She took. I don't even. I'm not real sure she even stepped on campus as a senior i think she took all of her classes there I, I, you see it a lot you know and it, that that takes a lot of the prerequisites as a parent yeah money as a parent it's a huge deal if your kid has that opportunity to take their classes at scf um, through a partnership they have with sarasota county schools that is huge I, I, that's you're saving i mean even with even if your your kid is a you know a 4.0 and I mean that's 40 grand mm -hmm. your minimum you're saving yeah no no, no doubt. one really realizes like oh I got a I got a full academic scholarship 
well, you're still going to live somewhere. <laughs> you still have to eat somewhere. Yeah, the, and the normal expenses do not go away. They're still no, there I with mean, everything else. And that's else. one thing, I, you know, the difference of, you know, there's a lot of kids that are like, oh, well, you know, I want to get an academic scholarship. Okay, well, you know, the difference between an academic scholarship and a football scholarship is – a lot, food, yeah, and, and housing, and you actually get paid now. But yeah, um, but SCF, what a you know what a great partnership we have with them. They've done a yes, they've, they've been a great sponsor for us over the last few years. Um, I think they do a wonderful job with our kids and our not only our local kids that um, want to go get a trade. Now you can go there and get a four a first a, you know a four year degree right at SCF. My uh, nephew goes there. Um, you know, so I think it's a great, like I said, it's a great opportunity. It's a beautiful campus, and and not only do those those type of kids get that opportunity, uh, we have a bunch. I mean, an awful lot of kids that are seniors and juniors that spend all day at SCF. Our yeah. kicker, Krill Kota, spends all day all day at USF. Or, or I'm sorry, SCF. Um, you know, taking classes there. We have a lot of kids that. Uh, no, take and advantage of it's that. A, it's a real, and it's, it's it's one of those situations, like you said, you knock out some of those math and English and all the other classes you're looking to. Do. Right. You, you know, and think about it when you know we all think we know what we want to do when we're 18 years old. I'm going to grow up to be a whatever, and then you go and you start taking classes. You're like, mm, well, you know what? I don't. I really maybe don't want to do that. And you at least you're figuring it out before you get into right. somewhere where you're committed to be an apartment and then you know all right. everything you've talked about, all the other things that go into it. And and again, and even even getting used to the idea that you're accountable. Uh, no, nobody's forcing you to go to college. Right. And I go back to the day, and I, I know it's still the same way. You get handed the syllabus. You say you can have you have seven excused actuses, but if you're absent that many times, you're going to fail no matter what. You get four tests to do it, and here you go. When you've been sort of spoon fed, you know, through your right. way through high school in some ways, and you have to learn how to be a college student and to learn it before you even have to really to right. be really into it. What an experience That's, that, that is, is alone. I think it's great. Um, yeah. The, you know, one of one of Mariah's friends, she actually. It was accelerated, and I think she almost got three years done. It's it's you know. depending on what you're doing and what your line of study is. I know that one of my employees that his daughter uh, got out of high school, and she had taken classes at SCF. I think she took one year at SCF, and then she was already in her career after one year. That's yeah. called. Yeah. So she was she's at 18, 19 years old, and she but was ready to it's go. Come a long way since oh, yeah. being in the brickyard to hey, where now. Hey man, hey, what's, what was cool about it is that you can go to eat pizza one day for lunch, you can go over to a sub shop the next day. But so I mean, there was a lot of good things to eat over there. But that's it has for sure. it has come a long way. I mean, yeah. they have a beautiful campus um, right there, um, right on Forty One. Yeah. The, and now it's really in the, in the Welland Park area. That's what I'm saying, Welland Park. Yeah, area. Yeah. So you get down there, but again, and and when they went down there, unlike I mean, similar to what like I went to UCF. Where they had all this property, now they have they have sixty thousand students. I'm not saying SCF has that many could have that many students, but there's the the, the, the property right. around there that they can keep building and building and right. building. They're not landlocked in any way, shape, or form. Right. So there, there's always potential for more growth. And heck, I, I remember back in the day that the biggest enrollment campus on this in the state of Florida was Miami Dade Community College, which is similar to what SCF is, because they they had they could put sixty thousand people on campus. So they had all this land. Traz Powell Stadium is on their campus, yeah. and so you can see that that, that they have that they're, they can do that stuff. And community college is such a good, um, again, financial situation, and then another kind of way to learn your way to to be able to be a better college student if you go forward. So, again, big big shout out and thanks to SCF for everything they do. And you can see we had a lot to say about it. So there's there's obviously some good things happening yeah, for, for sure. all of us. We have had good experiences. With that, back to football, coach. And then, um, you know, again, so Seminoles coming into town. We know that we twenty-four game road win streak. Twenty-six, you told me earlier. Twenty-six. Early. So, 26. so uh, you know, all that being the case, um, I don't think that I think I think we're not to the point now with all with our kids in particular that there really is no reminder, or they don't have to be like like pit over the head with the idea that this is a big game. This is a game that has you know that this is something that they again another one of those those games you put a check mark next to and say wow this is pretty darn cool that we get to play this this team mid-season and and see where we see where we're standing with with an, with an equivalent program right so i think i think that's a big thing and i think that the fans in particular while we had a you know sort of a um spotlight nationally on the on the program last week i think this game for for our fans in particular um we really want to have a big crowd this week because yeah, I think this is a this, this is, is a, this is a big game this is a big game for our program uh, this is a big game for the 2000 
20, 22 football team. Right, right. Um, I, th- I think a lot. I think a lot can come from this um, moving th- moving down the schedule. I think this is where you say to you, this is again. Now you're. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying you know anything less about San Seminole, but this is the one you say to yourself. All right, if I'm if I'm playing, if I'm a kid, I'm like okay. Me, you. I, I, I feel I don't have any doubt in my mind that this is where I, this is where I need to be. This is where I'm lining up. This is where I'm going to be successful. Right. And that, that's what you need to do. I think that's I think it's cool. Um, and happening now, um, where the weather's getting a little nicer. I was going to mention that earlier too. Gosh, I don't know about that. Well, it was so hot today. So we had to rush. We had to, we had to rush somebody in that was having almost you know we couldn't. It was, it was bad today. It was hot. So Friday night, again to the fans especially. They're talking about the lowest rain chances possibly of the year, with a little dry air rolling through on Friday. So we'll dry see. air would be nice. So we'll see. I don't. Know. There's supposed to be a front coming through. I'm not sure the timing of it all, but again, it could be really, really nice on Friday night, and that's hopefully what I'm looking for because it's always nice when you get that first little break in it. And I'm not saying this is going to be. This is no cold front. It's just a, it's just a drier air coming through, but even that makes such a difference, especially on, on especially in the evening, because some of those nights can be super muggy. You know they're. Right. And it's, it's, it's a lot to, to, to contend with. Um, I did notice one thing, just kind of thinking about it. A lot of times when, early in the year when you play some of these teams, a lot of cramping, a lot of you know, guys on the ground. Didn't see a lot of that this, this past week. Definitely not from us, but I, I didn't really see much for, for St. Francis, which, you know, that's, that's, that, but, but it's pretty good for not seeing these kids kind of rolling up with, with leg cramps or getting dehydrated or anything like that. Yeah, we, we cramped the... Um the kickoff classic week. I think we had two kids cramp. I don't think we have. I don't think we've cramped since then. No, I'm mean, actually. We usually don't. But I usually saw like it seems like I. You always see that sort of. Those yeah. nights can be a little bit. It can be a little bit taxing, especially from a team that's not living in the in this area. I mean, you 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 kind of hope to think that everybody in Florida, is sort of used to it and plays football here. Right. Especially the fact you practice during the day and you're playing games at night is probably a big difference right there. But you don't. You, you see a lot of cramping a lot of times that kids are not hydrated properly or right. they're not re- prepared for it. And that's one thing I will say uh, uh, kudos to, to not just the conditioning side of it, but actually the, the game day preparations, which means a lot, eating the right time and the right foods and, and, and hydrating like, like crazy. I know that you're usually the guy manning the uh, messing with the Gatorade uh, dispensers in the, high, in the in the in uh, the in the locker room. Yeah, I'm the Gatorade boy too. So well, you I think I think it's sort of like that's nervous energy a little bit too. I think that you're kind of kind of messing with that and kind of kind of keeps you yep. makes makes those 10 and 15 minute intervals go by a little faster. Yeah, otherwise, sure worrying it, about it, other it does, things. Because then t- and then once you start doing, you're breaking off to for stretching and everything. And just then then I think that's when the the, ro- the ball starts rolling, especially when you're in school at six o'clock in the morning and you have wait all, you're waiting all day for that, uh, thirteen hours to you go. Get by. to clean a lot of stuff in thirteen hours. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of vacuuming gets yeah. done. You can get your laundry done too if that if yeah. that's the case. Um, so I mentioned earlier, um, we're, we're 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 whites again this week. Or we or, what, what do we do we know no, yet? No, we're not wearing whites. Um, uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, we're ch- I'm praying that. Uh, Possibly the Jumpman Green's coming in, but you know, don't hold your breath on that. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I know most of the time, and you, you, you wear your home your home colors, but it has been interesting to see. I mean, that um, with the whites, and, and, and I'm sure it probably throws some of the other teams off. You know, say, hey, you know, man, got to got to let them know. You got to wear your other, got to wear different colors. Yeah. But um, well, we'll get to wear and we're on the road. We have got a road game. Yeah. Next week, so we'll, get, we'll be back in the way. The lone road game of the year. The as well. lone road game, yeah. And not very far as well, but. Uh, to we our went, vacation home. <laughs> head, head, head north. My vacation house. <laughs> <laughs> Go up there for a little while yeah. and see what happens up there. Um, locally, um, as far as as far as the, the things going around the, around the area, you mentioned a few teams that started up pretty well locally that we won't really see in the playoffs, but always been you always keep you always keep your eye. And I mean. We like to keep our eye on. I think they do. Everybody probably does the same thing. See how other teams in the area are doing because, you know, it's it's always of interest to see how a manatee is doing or something well, along those lines. We we could see in the playoffs. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they're they're uh, four four S. They are four S. They're undefeated. Um, so Coach Green has obviously uh, turned the corner with them. They've you know they beat Braden River, who was undefeated. Yeah. Friday night, who Braden River? I, I, did Braden River beat Palmetto? Right. They did. Yeah. So and then. Sarasota, great big win for for Coach Wiseman, Brody Wiseman. Um, they beat Palmetto Friday night. You know, so that, I I texted him. You know, that thought that was a a signature win for his program. Yeah, um, beating Palmetto, who's you know 
you don't really realize it, but you know, Palmetto has been in the like the regional championship for for three, four years. Or gosh, I thought I maybe mean, was it two years ago. I thought that they were they were going to win they a state, were state championship. They were state semifinals one yeah. year, and they almost beat um, Central. It, yeah, Central. They were in a tough ball game with Central and played played them played them tough. And um, you know, so I thought that was a really big win for Coach Wiseman. Uh, I, like I said, I texted him and oops, excuse me, congratulated him and said that I thought that he, you know turn the corner and you know at some point you know there are there are points you know and we talked about it before with us I mean there's points where we've turned the corner and you know we it took a long time I mean you know from 07 to I feel like we turned the corner in 16. Yeah no you know? you're right I think that was sort of the one we got past that wall that we were hitting with second round yeah. whatever it was and then at from that point forward it's been you know I think like now the expectations change and I think it's a lot to do with it too sometimes you just you don't really know, and then you do it, and you're like, "Now I expect to do it," and that, that's that, that's that it's weird. That's it's that weird. confidence that's built. Yeah, it's it's weird once you once once you do it, and you're like, "Oh, we did it." I'm yeah, like, let's do it again. Right. You know, and, and and you know how you know what it takes, and you think you know what it takes, but you really don't know what it takes, mm -hmm. and then you figure out like you figure out like what what you have to do for your team to to get there. And um, but I felt like we turned the corner in 2016. Um, by getting to, you know, I'm not sure who we played or what it was, but we got to the semifinals. Right. And then we, we, we played the devil. And then, um, and then 17, we got, got 17, we beat of, the devil. Right. You know. And I think, but I think even that was another stepping point where you said to yourself, now the expectation or, or the, you know, is that you're going to get to the, to the promised land, if you want to call right. it that, every time. And, 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 and so, and until you've done it, until you get there, you can only have you, you. You really you can you can say it, but you don't really know what it is to be in that right. arena. I think I think I think this past 2021 state championship, um, been there wasn't the same stadium wasn't the state, but the preparation, the mindset, uh, the attitudes, the the, the, the the approach to the to the travel, whatever it was, all seemed very seamless. That didn't seem like there was any no glitches, no problems, right. or whatever. And I think that means a lot when you can. When you can get those kids to be in a, in a comfortable environment, uh, in something that's going to be a very sort of uh, hyped up, you know, very very exciting situation, right. but their environment is, is is well done. It's it's good. It's good. Real quick before we get going, let's do our let's do our picks. Yeah, we do our picks. We'll so, do our picks. Um, just to let everyone know, I was six of six last week. Even though I didn't get a chance to, we didn't get a chance to talk because we didn't have the show last week. But I'm going to give you one. I'm going to give you our our lock together. Our lock, we have yes. one. We have one lock that you can't miss. And then, and then we have our four other picks. So I'm, I'm going um, our, our lock. Uh, we'll, we'll shoot, let's do the lock at the end. But okay. I'm going to tell you, Go I'm, going, I'm going Georgia. I know the spread is uh, huge. 46. It's huge. Yeah. Uh, but let me tell you this. Georgia has had, I want to say, 20, 29 possessions on the year. And they have 21 touchdowns, and they've scored 23 times. Yeah. That's so they're getting the ball, and they're scoring. Yeah. And, and watching their sideline, um, Kirby does not take his foot off the gas no. at all. I've never seen two, three better tight ends on a, on a team ever. Yeah, that's I'm ridiculous. going. The, I'm going to go. Uh, that's, that's hard for me to say too. I'm going to go uh, App State. Okay. Minus six and a half. Um, I know they've been in some tight ball games, but I think I think they get a little bit of breathing room here. Um, and they kind of they kind of open up the doors a little bit. Definitely, definitely a wake up call. You can't you can't just dial it in after you beat Texas A and M. You got to play yeah. every game like it means something. So, and I'm gonna go Oklahoma. Okay. I, I watched. I was able. To, I watched. Actually, watched the Oklahoma game, and uh, I was just real impressed. I thought they played well on defense, and I I, I love their offense. So I'm gonna go Oklahoma. And then my last one is Utah. They're playing Arizona State. Okay. And. It's, and they just lost their coach. They just lost their coach, and I think and I'm not positive, but I think that Herm Herm Edwards, right? Right. I think he was probably pretty well liked in the locker room. Yes, he was. And I think that uh, that's going to have some effect on their kids. Two things about that, real quick. They said Herm Edwards was fired on the field as they walked up the field. And number two, I'll say it now. I've been hearing rumors. I've been listening to the radio of things. Don't watch out for Urban Meyer taking the Arizona State job. Wow, well, two different. It's good. They, Two different spectrums. Hasn't, played, hasn't been a coach in the Pac-12, and it's a beautiful place, and they got money, so. And and I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you also a, a, the every week lock, but um, 
it's not going to be part of my five. But it is a, it is a lock. This is a you take Bama right, and you also take Bama halftime right. Half, yeah. it, uh, that's that, I know that for sure. Well, now you wrote you took mine, put mine I down. I took yours down. Okay, so we'll look mine real quick. I got to put my glasses on for this. I took Clemson. I mean, I took uh, Wake Forest giving seven or take uh, getting seven from Clemson. I took USC giving six and a half to Oregon State. I took Kansas minus seven and a half versus Duke. Kansas is three and zero for the first time in a long time, and are looking yeah. good doing it. Uh, Michigan State pl uh, plus two and a half. Uh, Minnesota, Michigan State had a really crappy game last week, and I think they're going to come out all guns a blazing. And then going a little home time flair here. Old Dominion's been playing fantastically all year. Probably had a chance to be Virginia last week. Could have won this won the state championship if yep. they would have done it. Uh, they're giving six it to Arkansas State, so I'll take Old Dominion. And then I'll let you go ahead and tell us what tell everybody what the lock so of the week our, is. Our our big lock of the week is Arkansas over Texas A&M. Get, and we're, they're getting two, getting but two. you can go ahead and take the money line on that. Yeah, so I just – and the reason is I think Arkansas plays a different – they're playing that, that line them up and blow you off the ball kind of thing. they got a big, strong quarterback. I think Texas A&M is sort of in disarray at this point. Didn't really come out, and the, the game in Miami game was a little bit blasé. It right. didn't really have much to it. And they haven't been scoring very many points. So I think if Arkansas can get a lead on them, I think it might be over early in that game. I, I mean, I want to say – Blowout, but I would say in control. And, and the head coach's name is Sam Pittman. And Sam Pittman likes cold beer after a win. He's going to want a cold beer. <laughs> and Saturday. Sam Pittman, his pedigree is good. He's a Georgia guy. He knows yeah. he's been around. The, he knows, and and he's put. You know, he he made it simple. Um, he's keeping it. He's and, and and Arkansas. You know, people forget Arkansas has been a power for a long, long time. I mean, yeah. national championships and being playing for big games. Back in the old Southwest Conference, so they're not they're 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 not uh, this is not a, a new thing for Arkansas. Arkansas no. has put uh, hell when, when Florida was an SEC championship game in all those years. They played Arkansas a number of times, so it's um yeah you got to remember that that's a that's a pedigreed area and their fan base is is big, and it's powerful. They got a lot of money in Arkansas. They got all Walmart money and all Bob Evans money and all kinds of stuff. So. They're not. They're, they'll be right in there with the NIL. This guy could be building something for a while. They yeah. could be. They're not. Um, they're not Alabama, but they could be peeking their head up there and, and taking advantage of some stuff right now. So, I, yeah, watch that Arkansas game. I think that's going to be a, a lock. Well, Coach, uh, another another podcast in, in the can here for us. And uh, Friday night, everybody come out. Seven thirty, Powell Davis Stadium. Uh, Sanford Seminole rolls into town, we're and we on, we're back on VSN or no? We are back on VSN. So yeah. if you if you're inclined. Uh, you know where to go for that. That's you'll go to the VeniceIndianFootball.org. There'll be a link through there, and you'll see myself and Josh Grant doing the game. And uh, the quality of our programming has gotten so much better, and it keeps getting better. Francis and Josh are doing a fantastic job. New graphics every week. So watch us. I mean, I, I got people watching and saying like, I'm not quite sure. I'm, this is any. This this is this is. I'm watching the same quality programming. Not necessarily the guys talking, but the program itself. Is uh, is right up there with anything else. It might have been better than Amazon Prime's NFL broadcast uh, on last Thursday, according to people that I spoke to. So we'll see. At least we know our microphones should work. Especially these new microphones, right? We got headsets now. We're really liking this, so we can we can hear ourselves good, and the people are still having fun and bogeys, and we're not even hearing them get have fun and bogeys, right. which is good. With that, thanks, Coach, for being here, and thank you for joining us on the podcast. Hope to see you guys all on Friday night. Have a good evening.